Hello, welcome back to Corey's Corner. Um, so in the last video, we left off building a API integration for Devise. Um, so that's great and all, but if we're working with mobile apps, we're going to be, you know, building the the login points of our API over and over again. And I figured, hey, that makes no sense. Why don't I do a tutorial on building um, API engines? And that's exactly what this is. So in this little tutorial series, we're going to be building a Rails engine, which is basically a miniature application that can hook into your normals Rails application. And this engine is going to provide the API endpoints for device authentication. Um, now this is an open source gem I developed, so I will link it in the into the uh, description of the file, but if you want to contribute, by all means do. But anyway, um, I generated a new Rails engine app. If you don't know how to do that, you can come to the Getting Started with Rails Engines Rails Guide and learn how to do that. But the first thing that you have to do is you have to come to your gem spec. Now, my, my uh, project is called Devise API YouTube. Um, and you have to change this. So I just filled it in with all the dummy data. You have to change this. I change this. You change this source code, channel log, URI. So basically you just fill that with all dummy data for now. And then you can run bundle and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to add device to our um, project. So we install the device gem. That'll install a bunch of other gems. And then we are going to on Rails G device install. I'll clear this. I'm going to do Rails G device user. I believe is the command. I got that right. So this created will open up our app, go to our models. You'll see everything will be namespaced inside Devise API YouTube. So it'll be inside of a module and we have our user app. But um, we are going to keep all of this right now. But what we're actually going to do is we are going to just comment this out because this will give us the standard Devise routes for our user um, and we don't want those. We're going to namespace our routes only into API um, domains. Plus, this might configure or conflict with the um, the routes of the application that this engine will be hooking into. But anyway, the next thing that we need to do is we need to run Rails DB migrate. So we'll do Rails DB migrate. Got that out of the way, and then. We are going to generate some controllers. Do Rails G controller API slash v1 slash users registration. So we have our users registration controller. Now we're going to create the routes for that. So we can do namespace API do namespace v1 do and then we will add our controller actions here in just one second so we'll open up our controller we'll go to api v1 you'll see this too is also namespaced inside of the module which will be the name of your project but the first thing that we need to do for our controller is instead of inheriting from act application controller it will help inherit from action controller api um, and basically this takes off it's like a lightweight version of action controller but um it has less methods so like um authenticity tokens will not be required on post request and stuff like that but anyway the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create have a create action and because this is an API we won't need a new action um, 
And this is basically just going to be for creating a new user. So I will namespace this. Well, I'll just add some comments. So post API v1 slash registrations um, users slash registrations. Actually, now we'll just do registrations slash registrations. Um, actually, I want to keep the namespacing consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment that and I'm going to run Rails routes. And I'm going to grep for registration. Because I want our API routes to measure, um, I mean, not measure, to be as close to the device um, naming conventions as possible because that just makes it easier to remember. So you see here we have user registration and we are just posting to users. So I will follow that. So slash users and we're going to do at user equals user dot new um, user underscore params well it should be this params so if at user dot save we will do something else. We will return our um, unauthenticatable content. Um, so what we want to do is we want our API to be able to respond to JSON and XML um, responses, but there is the respond to helper that Rails comes with. So we are going to, how the heck do I get this back? There we go. So I'm just going to generate a scaffold. And delete the scaffold real quick. So I can see what respond to looks like. And this is the test. That's not what I wanted. I wanted the controller. Did they get rid of the respond to? You know, we'll skip that right now. We'll leave that as a refractor. So Rails D scaffold. Foo. Bang, bang, bang. So if our user saves, um, so I, what we're going to want to render our user. So what I like to do, and then once once we render the user, we send the user data back to our mobile application. Um, the mobile application will store that user locally onto the phone. So what I usually do is I'll do render JSON, and this will take a hash. The first key will be user, and it will be at user two JSON. And then we want to also provide a response code to our um, JSON response, so we'll do status is okay, which is a 200 response. Um, if you see, I come back here, Rails has all these helpers. We're just gonna keep it simple using the okay response. If our user does not save, maybe we have some bad validations on it or whatever, we'll just, um, or invalid, you know, something happens, we'll do render json and we'll just do error and what i like to do is i like to just put the um response code shorthand up here so we'll do a 400 response which is bad request uh we could render the user errors here but i don't want to do that right now so we'll do bad request so we have our create action now we need to add the route. So we have namespace API do, namespace v1 do. And we'll do post to users, comma two. And we pass in our controller name, which will be API slash v1. Oh. Yeah, it 
this should be API slash v1. No, it should be registrations. Sorry, users, registration, hashtag, create. Am I doing this right? I am. And then we will do Rails routes, grab registration. One more time. We have API v1 users, API v1 users, and then we say we mapped it to the correct controller. So that works out all dandy. The next thing that we are going to want to do, we'll just finish commenting that out, is we want to test our controller. So if we run Rails test, right now we're going to get an error because every time you create a device model, there is an issue with the fixtures. So I should probably submit a pull request to fix this, but basically you have um, a uniqueness constraint that is being messed up. So we'll do email, email one at example.com. And for two, we have email, email two at example. Dot com and I think we need to run Rails DB migrate before I run the test. So we'll take a look at the migrations folder. Uh, I must have already ran that. Wow. So we got our email, we have the encrypted password, reset token, stuff like that. Pretty basic stuff. Um, now we run Rails test. Bang, bang, bang. We get this test our green. So I'm going to come to my controllers. We're going to write one little controller test before we wrap up this video. Um, I'm not really sure what this is for, but I will look into it for you. Anyway, we're going to do test create returns user and 200 response if user saves. Do, and then we will do setup, do. Actually, uh, we don't need to do that. So we will do post API v1 users path, we'll do params. Actually, I forgot to do a parameters filter on this, so we can do come to our registrations controller. We'll create a private method, so private def user params. We'll do params dot require user dot permit. We have to pass in a list, which will be email, password, password confirmation, and then if we had other things like address or whatever, we would have to either put those in here or create a whole new endpoint to handle getting that data in. So now that we have this private user params method, we can use that right here when creating our new user object before saving it to the database. We come back to our test. So I will do user and then we can do email foo at example.com and our password will be Billy Bob 123 we need to do the password confirmation equals Billy Bob 123 bang um, we need to going to for now before we um, actually run the test we're just going to put out response body and so rails test you see we get our response body which 
is what we created earlier. So we want to assert uh, equal 200. So assert equal, it takes the expected status code 200 and then our actual response with the response.status and we'll add a message, return status was incorrect and we want to, <laughs> what I want to do is I want to do body equals response dot body I want to do JSON dot parse body so we'll do assert equal um, user dot last this should work um, and then JSON dot parse response dot body so let me run this test one more time. We get one failure. Let me comment this out. So we had our expected. Oh, we have to add a two H there. So two hash. Now, now what we can do, we can do assert equal user dot last dot to JSON comma JSON dot parse response dot body. Just edit that. We should be in the green now. Nope. What did I do wrong? Oh, I need to get the user key of the response body. Go like that. Hold on. So body equals response dot body user. body so let me scroll up make sure you guys know what's going on so this is the actual response body and we call the two JSON method on that you see it has this user key so we need to get the actual value of the user key which you can see is actually equal to this and we need to set that into the assert part so we just run the test make sure our body looks how we'd like it to Mm. Hold on, body. Let me try this. JSON dot parse response dot body. So P body, comma body dot class. Let's see what we got there. It should be either of class hash or a string. Yep, it is a string, or it's a hash. So we can do this, we can do assert equal. So our actual, our expected value will be the last user and we'll call the to JSON method on that. And then we will do um, body user to get the user key of our body. Run Rails test for a fifth time and we are still getting a failure. Hmm. Maybe I need to go like this, user. Ah, and this worked, okay. Sorry that took so long, but anyway. What we have to do with each response body is we need to use the json.parse method to return it into a hash. Then we need to reference the user, the value from the user key in that hash. Now, 
on to our next test. Now our next test, we want to handle the, uh, you know, a faulty response. So test invalid user returns 400 response and error message do. I'm just going to copy this and we will handle the case of two, a password that does not match the password com, uh, the password confirmation. So we will do assert equal 400 response dot status. And then we will do, we are not even, we're not really concerned with the error message in this point. So we're not going to test that because that can always change. For example, I might run it, return the actual errors of the created user to our API endpoint and then rather register that to the screen on my mobile application. So we're just not going to test that after the uh, plus the debacle we faced in our last test. So we will run Rails test once more. In this case, our test will fail. I mean, I will. It will work, but you'll see that we comment these guys out. Test will now fail. And you know that we've got some working test. All right, well, that is it for this episode. What I want you to do from here is, I want you to subscribe, I want you to like the video, then I want you to go listen to my podcast. But anyway, thank you. In the next video, we're going to be um, adding a custom to JSON method for our user. Um, we're also going to be adding a, an authentication token to make our application a little bit safer. And then we're going to work on things like sessions and hopefully um, a uh, email reset uh, module as well. Um, I'm really excited. This is my first open source project that I guess I am leading. And eventually it's going to be used uh, by someone other than me or taken care of by someone other than me. And I would like for you to be that person. Thank you for watching Corey's Corner.